Hi, would you like to memories with me? I know you guys like tanks. Everybody likes tanks. So this video is brought to you by World of Tanks, and I know a lot of you already play it, but for anyone who is new to the game, we have a premium invitation code for you. Tanktastic. You're gonna get seven premium days, 500 gold, and a premium tank, the T-127. That's a Soviet tier three tank. World of Tanks is a huge multiplayer game that is free to play, so anybody can jump on. You get 11 nations of tanks. We're talking hundreds of tanks. 30 plus maps that are all based on real world locations. Plus you got multiple game modes, different music that you you can check out. And you know that World of Tanks actually holds two Guinness World Records, the most people simultaneously on one game server. So it's not Ready in 59 or Ultima Online. No, it's World of Tanks. In the comments, let me know what your favorite tank is. And also, just let me know what your favorite map is. I'm kind of curious. I've got the link in the invitation code. It's all right in the top of the description. So be sure to check there. And we'll see you online in World of Tanks. On the desk right now, I've got two Chief Tech Dragon cases. One is steel and one is aluminum. Which one do you think is which? The blue or sort of, I like to call this a romance purple color. This one is going to be the aluminum one. And then the silver case is the steel version. Now I got both of these sent in from a couple of viewers or a couple of the community members. I want to say thanks to them. We have Dustin who sent in the purple version of the case that you see right here. And he sent this in with the full system. And both these guys just asked me to pay for the shipping. So that's really generous. And I was able to take a look at the system that was inside here, uh, install Windows XP, and then um, pull that out because I'm gonna upgrade it to a more modern XP system. But I've, I've got that on the desk and I'm gonna talk through that. And then over here, uh, we don't have a full system, but we've got a couple optical drives. That's, that's how old we're talking right here. This one was sent in by Tom, um, otherwise known as Big Cat Musty. I think you may know him, right? So thanks to both of those guys for providing this from the, uh, for the video. I'm gonna be kind of hiding over here in the corner, but let's mostly focus on these cases. Now, these cases are early 2000 cases. Uh, I don't know if they were around in 1999 or not, but both of these were sort of the first uh, really serious cases that were extremely widespread in the gaming community. Started to see a few mods here and there with these cases and just some lights and stuff like that. So on the purple one here, we have some cathode tubes and you guys can still go and buy these cathode tubes. But back then, uh, this was something that started mostly before RGB. You had some fans that had some LEDs and stuff like that, but before there was full on RGB, what you would do is if you, if you wanted some illumination is you would get um, a couple of fans that had LED lights that were just like one color. Like here, we've got these crazy 80 millimeter fans in the back there's two of those here and they're um they're gonna glow in like a green color they've got the green translucent plastic looking like an n64 controller or something like that and then on the bottom we have a cathode tube and then up here on the rail we also have another cathode tube to add some green glow and on the silver version we just have some blue led fans uh, that are in there with the translucent plastic that was like all the rage was that translucent plastic now a lot of people built uh windows I guess uh, late 98, but mostly uh, Windows 2000 and Windows XP uh, systems inside this case. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be putting together a late Windows XP system with a core. It'll be a core 2 quad or actually a core. Uh, it'll be a Xeon that I've modded, but it's essentially like a core 2 quad and a socket 775. But when I first got this, Dustin had a few things installed in there. So we get to check out some history right here. This is the Radeon. It's an AGP card, which if you're completely new to PC, AGP was the slot that came just before PCI. So this is not PCI Express 1. It's before that. This is AGP. So it's slower, but this was your dedicated graphics slot, and it was quite a bit faster than, than like your standard PCI that you don't even really see on motherboards anymore. So you'd have one AGP slot. And this is an X1300 Pro with 256 megabytes of RAM, which was quite a bit to play games like Unreal Tournament and Deus Ex and some of the early 2000 games, Half-Life 1, uh, even Half-Life 2 would run okay on that card. And then the motherboard in here, I'll, I'll give this a quick mention. I'm not going to do a full on uh, video on these parts, but you know, you can see how far we've come. See, this is, this is an Asus A7N 8XE because we have that 8X AGP slot right there. That's where that, that uh, naming convention comes from. And then this is an nvidia chipset so get this we have we have amd nvidia and ati all on the same motherboard ati is the company that made radions before 
um, before AMD bought them up. So we have ATI, and then the chipset itself is not an Intel chipset, uh, not an AMD chipset. It is the NVIDIA Inforce chips. This is some old school stuff back when NVIDIA used to design uh, motherboards and chipsets and that sort of thing. And then on top of that, we have the AMD single core 3200 uh, plus CPU. Now above and beyond that, we have one stick of uh, DDR memory. DDR, not DDR4, DDR memory. And it's 512 megabytes only. Still, G-Skill, they were around back then. This is PC 3200. It does not mean it's 3200 megahertz, so no. All right, so I went ahead and removed those, and let's take a tour of the inside of this case. As you can see, we have a lot of options. On top, external access for drive bays was really important because you still had floppies that were, some people really wanted some backwards compatibility for old games and stuff like that. Lots and lots of floppy games that were still viable at this time point, um, around the early 2000s but we also needed optical drives because people were burning things to disks. So both of these came with how they should, with a really fast, like, you know, 48X or 50X CD burner. And then you also have a DVD burner in there as well, but it's gonna be a slower DVD burner. So if you're just burning CDs, just grab yourself a stack, grab yourself a spindle, and go crazy. There's only one name when it comes to CDs, and that's Tayo Yudin. So we have a whole stack. I bought 25 Tayo Yudins so I can burn windows and that sort of thing. Maybe uh, some of my old games that I don't want to get them scratched up, knocking around. I'll make a, a backup of those right here and then install them that way. And then when it comes to DVDs, I actually ordered verbatim. And I ended up getting these HP DVD uh, Dash R. I went for the Dash R for maximum compatibility. That's one of the things I wanted to make sure I had. But if, you know, for newer stuff, I probably would have gone with the Plus R. Anyway, also on the inside here, we've, you see we've got four slots in the front for five and a quarter base. And two of those are populated with uh, DVD and CD burners. Then below that, we've got a couple empty slots. This case had a really nice system. Um, you could install a couple of um, brackets on the side and then it would become sort of like a, it wasn't a full on sled, but you could slide it right in and out of the drive bay from the front, making things really easy. Now, speaking of the front, you notice that uh, there's a door and a little lock on the door. Those doors kind of uh, had a tendency to break. So the, the I'm, I keep calling this purple, even though it's sort of a cobalt blue, but purple case, yeah, the door is uh, broken on that one. So it's all right, it'll, it'll still stay in place. But the weird thing is, is that the power and the reset button are beneath the door. Now that's a security feature because there's a lock on the front. So if you want someone to, um, you know, lock them out while you're at work and make sure they don't get in to mess with your files, you just lock the front and then they really would have to break the front in order to turn on your computer. Or if they know what they're doing, they could pull off the side panel and jump the motherboard with a screwdriver. But I don't think everyone uh, was going to go to those links. Who knows? Also, uh, here in the front, we've got a couple different bays and there's different, different configurations. There are... Um, some cages here, or there's like in the silver version, just a couple sleds, right? These cages, you can put a few three and a half inch uh, hard drives in there, or you can even install some floppies that'll go through to the front. You've got a couple bays there for floppies or whatever you want to install, just you know, three and a half inch drives right there in the front. And you can fit an 80 millimeter fan right there in the front to blow some air, uh, you know, intake from the front and blow it over top of those hard drives. Now, this is an ATX case, so uh, this will still be viable for modern hardware. You could put an ETX motherboard in there. You may not have all the bells and whistles with the front panel because the front panel is a little weird. You see those USB? Yeah, we've got USB, but what's what's that strange thing that you've probably never seen before unless you grew up with computers? That's FireWire. IEEE 1394. So FireWire was a very fast uh, standard. I believe it was developed by Sony for Apple. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it was Intel, Intel for Apple, but... Apple was uh, really pushing this, but it was also available on PCs. And it was a uh, different sort of interface, better for mostly hard drives and stuff like that. So have one of those on the front and you can get one of those on the back, depending on the motherboard you had. Now, also on the inside here, you'll notice some very strange, big, floppy green cables with huge plugs. Well, that's for your floppy and your IDE, of course. Uh, ginormous pins. Now, IDE, if you, again, have no idea what that means, well, SATA is the plug for most modern hard drives. And actually, the modern stuff is just M.2. It plugs straight into the motherboard, right into the bus, NVMe, go. Huge plugs. Now, this motherboard that was in there had a couple SATA, but it also had the uh, legacy IDE stuff. So I plugged in one of my IDE hard drives here and decided to throw Windows on one of these disks and, and get Windows XP going. All right, so you'll notice that the power supply is actually up here on the top. And one of the biggest innovations since then is just moving the power supply from the top here all the way down to the bottom. But you have a nice big rail and a huge space here so you can install larger power supplies. 
this is only a 430 or 480 watt i forget but it's a small power supply that i'm going to replace for a bigger build in this system one of the coolest things about this case was the storage system for the brackets for your different hard drives and also your optical drives and stuff they just snap onto the bottom there so they just stay inside your case so you do not lose them and I wouldn't mind seeing, like, especially now that we have a lot of the cases with the shrouds and stuff on the bottom, I would love to see maybe inside the shroud or on the back of the shroud or something like that, some more of these uh, clips so you don't lose the brackets when you're installing new stuff. You'll just have it right there. You won't have to look around for it. Also, D Dustin was, uh, he installed all those cathode ray tubes and a giant rocker switch. Now, this rocker switch was hooked up. It's all plugged in through Molex connectors. Those are the uh, power connectors that came just before the SATA connectors that you see. A little bit bigger and a little bit harder to plug in, but yeah, that satisfying rocker sound clicking. Yeah. You like that, do you? You like that? Now, uh, one thing I noticed is whenever I turned on the computer, if I try to move this around or touch it to some of the metal or something like that, it'll zap, shut off the power supply, and I'll have to reboot the computer. So leave it in there. Don't mess with it because if it touches anything, it'll send a, it'll short out the system. Just using the hardware that he had, I decided to go ahead and install Windows XP, even though 512 megabytes of RAM is on the lower side i mean i won't be able to do too much with it but we can install it and feel some feel some nostalgia i'll just let you guys look at the these video shots on the screen here of the installation process you can have some memories and have some feels i'm installing windows xp 32 bit which will only allow you to use four gigabytes of ram inside the os it's going to say 3.2 gigabytes are used but it's going to see the, see and use the entire four and i'm install, installing the uh, service pack 3 version of this because the older versions like Windows XP right out of the box didn't have very good USB support uh, for USB 2 especially and um, you really needed to you know install the service pack so I'm just getting it all installed in one go with an ISO that has you know service pack 3 pre-installed with Windows XP. Now once I got into the system I realized that yeah it's just not enough uh, the RAM it's, it's too slow when I wanted to open up any kind of modern web browsers or anything like that it was just too slow uh, installing some games and stuff was not going to work, so uh, Arx Vitalis, that's going to have to wait until I put a better system in here, but um, Windows XP was the original. You can still play games like that on some new modern hardware, but it just runs better on the original. Uh, there's a few other games that I'm going to be playing on uh, you know, this system, but for now, that's what it is. All right, let's take a look at the silver one and see a few things that are different on that one. You'll notice we have a fan right here in this nice big acrylic side window. So he's got a fan there as well. These are 80 millimeter fans. So 80 millimeter fans can be a little noisy. Just the smaller fans have a tighter, you know, radius when they spin, they kind of buzz a little bit. So there's that. This one has something that I loved. It's up off the ground a little bit thanks to these plastic feet that you can turn if you want to just like turn them so that they're completely under the case you can do that or if you want to give your case a wider stance i don't know why you really need it if it's in a precarious spot maybe i don't know you want to just make sure it's really nice and secure and it's not going to tip you can turn these feet out and uh and leave it that way now let's talk about one of the other things that was really big back in this time period right and that is we've got um these little external brackets they would plug up to your motherboard because sometimes you'd only have a few usb ports on your motherboard and if you needed more you could use these if not Eh, who cares? You don't need them. Plugs into a USB header on the motherboard. Gives you two more USB ports on the back. And then this one actually is two Firewire ports. And it gives you the large Firewire and then also the smaller size. I think it was a four pin Firewire. But this is the Firewire that a lot of cameras and stuff like that used. You could just plug the camera straight into the computer and then get your glorious like 640 by 480 or whatever it was footage live from the camera. So a lot of live video feeds came straight into the camera just with this, or you could plug it up and dump your footage straight from the camera to your computer using one of these. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to go over this Chief Tech case, this ridiculously, gloriously beautiful Chief Tech case. And again, this was made by Chief Tech, but um, in China they were, I believe, Chenming. So if you're looking for one yourself, you want to do a retro build, look for a Chenming Dragon, Chief Tech Dragon, or even the Antec Dragon. And then whether or not you want to pay the extra money to get the aluminum, if you can get it, it might be worth it because the aluminum is going to be less as far as the shipping goes, because it weighs quite a bit less being aluminum, right? And then one thing I would love to figure out how to do is uh, if I have enough room, I would like to mod and try to get a 120 millimeter fan in here. Maybe I could do that at, a, at an angle, but the back is a bit narrow for a 120, but it'll be so much quieter 
in comparison to this 80 millimeter fan that we have here and the 80 millimeter fans that are in the front. So if I can figure out a way to mod in a 120 millimeter fan and put maybe a Nocto in there, I know it's cheating because it's not part of the era, but I don't really care about cheating with the power supply, the fans, and a couple of the accessories uh, as long as the the heart, the CPU, the motherboard, and the GPU are from that era, then I'm okay. I just That's all I care about. The rest of it I can cheat, and I don't need the nostalgia for even the power supply and the fans. So that's that's my rules. So what have I got for the uh, for the upgrade video that I'll be doing? Well, this was a very early, like, or late Windows 2000, early Windows XP system that was in here. So I needed to, to step it up a little bit. So I've got, well, i got 8 gigs of RAM, but I'm probably going to use the 32-bit operating system. So I'll just put in a couple sticks of my Corsair XMS memory. It's DDR2. That going. And then I'll get some of this going right here. I've got an 8800 GTX got the EVGA variety, the mighty fallen BFG. This is Migraine Man. At least it was when I was working at Tiger Direct. I always called this guy Migraine Man. Right there it is. So I'm going to put in this one in there as the, the primary and then using the and using the EVGA as the secondary running SLI. I have a very fast quad core uh, CPU. It's not a core 2 dual. It's a modified Xeon that is a little bit faster than most of the um, Core 2. Well, it's not as fast as like the Extreme and stuff like that, but it's a lot better for the money. And you can order them straight from Hong Kong or China. That are They're pre-modified to work on 775 motherboards. They just needed to, to solder a couple pins on the back, and then it'll work just fine right in a native 775 socket without any weird modifications or anything like that. So if you guys are curious about that, I will put an eBay link in the description. But stay tuned pretty soon. Um, I'll be doing a build in this and uh, thanks to everybody who submitted ideas for what games to play on Windows XP Keep them coming. Keep telling me what games you want to see see played on this and uh, Of course, it'll run crisis with two 8800 GTX cards in there. So there you have it This was like my Windows XP system for the entire time that Windows XP was a thing this exact case right here the this color and everything so when uh, when I saw this, I was like, yeah, I got to have it. And then I saw this one. I was like, ooh, this one has some pieces that I really want for this one. So, And plus, it's kind of cool to be able to show off the two different styles. So I think I'll take the feet off of this, put it on here, maybe use some pieces that are uh, on the front panel to fix the, uh, the front door or whatever on this one. Who knows? Anyway, I really enjoy these old retro videos. It reminds me why I got into this in the first place. And it kind of breaks the grind up a little bit from all the just modern hardware that's more of the same, more of the same. And, and allows me to remember... Uh, you know, like a happy time when I was really into this, like had not, not busy doing all million things, just, just playing games and having fun and checking out different hardware and stuff like that. So let me know what you guys think of this in the uh, comments and always we support your habits. Also, I'll support your, uh, your gaming needs by providing mice and keyboards over on epicpants.com. And also you can grab a really cool t-shirt like this anti-apple shirt. we got a couple of those. Got some really cool, um, homage shirts to older games like Doom and Deus Ex. So be sure to check those out over at epicpants.com. I'll see you guys in the comments. And again, thanks to World of Tanks. See you guys later.